My name is Tanika Scott. I'm here representing the Financial Fit Club to help everybody out getting this good knowledge. Um, I wish y'all could join us in the, the next okay. conference. Um, should be coming up soon, actually. So you should come out and join us and get this great knowledge for free. Financial Fit, baby. Yes, Financial Fit, baby. Join us. Check out join up. Join up. Thirty for thirty is very good. It would definitely help you. And I am the wife of the owner Greg Scott. This is the daughter. This is the son. This is the daughter. Daughter. Family. Daughter. You stepping from your sister. Oh, what a family! Hi. They're all financially fit. We're all financially fit. I'm not. Just introduce myself. My name is Greg Scott. I'm the founder of Financial Fit Club. I'm a Portsmouth native. I went to Churchland High School. Um, graduated in 2004. I went to the apprenticeship program that you put in the shipbuilding, if anybody's familiar. Um, after finishing my apprenticeship, I made supervisor at Newport New Shipyard. I worked there for two more years. Then I transferred over to Norfolk Naval Shipyard. I worked there for seven years. I made supervisor there, made it to a second level manager position. And through that experience, I figured out that being financially free had nothing to do with how much money you make. Because I made a pretty good income, but I still ended up living paycheck to paycheck, drowning in debt, one emergency away from losing everything. So at that point, me and my wife talked about it. We wanted to get our finances together, so we started seeking financial information. We went to some free workshops like we're hosting today, actually got a financial planner, and put together a game plan to become financially free. Through that, we was able to boost our credit scores. My credit score is above 800 now. My wife is right behind me, right about 780. Uh, we was able to eliminate all of our debt, build a significant emergency fund that owes about three months of our monthly bills, and we got rolling. We was able to purchase a second home. So through that experience, I wanted to be able to give everybody that same type of education that me and her received so I can help other people build a road and have a financial freedom like me and her did. So that's where the Financial Fit Club came from. So um, I want you to introduce my family. My family's here, my beautiful wife. Tanika, my daughters, um, my parents, and uh, some good friends and family. Um, and I want to thank Ms. Denise. She hosted this event. Um, she is a realtor with Exit Realty Group. If anybody's looking for a home, she's a great agent to connect with. And we can get you her contact information at, at the end of the workshop if you would like it. So um, everybody's here for the Wealth Building Strategy Workshop. So. Uh, I had everyone sign in and I had everyone write what did they expect to get out of this workshop because I really want to know what everybody is seeking as far as financial information so I can tell them our workshops according to what people actually need. So I have uh, my brother passing out a workshop, a worksheet for everyone to fill out. It's going to have some basic financial questions. We're going to go through them together and um, kind of break down some things that are, that, that are holding us back financially. Does everyone have a pencil? Question number one. What was the rate of inflation last year? Question two. How much of your income goes to taxes? Question number three. What is your credit score? Question number four. How much do you have saved in your emergency fund? <laughs> so, question number one. I want this workshop to be interactive. I don't want to talk y'all to death. I want some interaction from the group. So, do I have any volunteers that want to tell me what the rate of inflation was last year? 2.5? 3. 3? 8.9. 8.9? I said 7. 7? Rate of inflation last year was 3.22%. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Question number two. How much of your income goes to taxes? Anybody? 33%. 33? Anybody else? Anybody else got a guess? I'll say about 10%. How much? About 33%. <coughs> So the average employee is paying between 28 and 33 percent of their income in taxes. So we can say on the average 30 percent. So 
So next question. What is your credit score? Anybody want to volunteer? What your credit score is? 675. 675? 562. 562? 656. Anybody else? 680. Okay. 675. 675. You just hold that back. You just hold that back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. How much do you have in your emergency fund? <laughs> Anybody want to volunteer what they have in the emergency fund? $25. $25. Anybody else? Any takers? $200. $200. Anybody else? 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 Can anybody tell me what you should base your emergency fund off of? Three months. Anybody? Three to six months of your monthly expenses. Three months at a minimum. At a maximum, you want six months of your monthly expenses. So everybody can kind of think of in their mind what you make per month and how much you should have in your emergency fund. All right. Now, I'll each, and, uh, each and every one of us have two objectives. Those objectives are maintain your current lifestyle. Nobody wants to decrease their standard of living. And we want to pay for our future lifestyle, which will be paid for with investments. Would everyone agree? Mm -hmm. Now, for my parents and, her, and my parents' parents, their retirement is based off I'm sorry, Social Security and pensions, which neither one of these are working, right? No, that's true. Has everyone seen the three-legged retirement stool? The three-legged retirement stool are made up of three components. The first is Social Security. Now, all of us know when the baby boomers happened, it put a large strain on the Social Security system. When the Social Security system was first established, you had 40 people working, paying out to each one employee. Today, you have three people paying in to every one person working. And that's why you're here now about Social Security running out. It could be running out somewhere between 2040 and 2043. So people my age and younger, I would not bank on having Social Security when we get to retirement age. The second leg is pensions. Now, for my parents, everybody had pensions. Their parents, everybody had pensions. You worked at a job 20 years, you retire, you got a significant income come from your job, plus your Social Security check, and everybody lived happy and free. Right? Everybody enjoyed their golden years. But both of us know, all of us know that that's a disappearance. Most companies are now offering 401ks, which is a personal savings account, which is the third leg. So now your retirement is pre pretty much based off what you personally save while you're working and invest, versus companies taking care of you with a pension and Social Security taking care of you, which is the government. But as you see, I have all three legs looking like they're crumbling because Social Security we know is falling apart. Pension is pretty much disappears. And the average person has no idea what they need to save to be able to survive in retirement. So the three-legged stool is crumbling for the average American right now. So there are four challenges that are keeping you from reaching your income and financial goals. The first one is inflation. Now, we talked about inflation earlier. That was the first question. And we talked about inflation is 3.22%. So does anybody know what inflation is, first of all? Sir? When the price of things go up. The price of things go up. So inflation is the increase in price of goods and services. One of the things that you can look at day to day and see it, quite frankly, is through gas prices. The last couple months, everyone saw gas prices jump about 25 to 30 cents. Am I right? Did anybody get a pay raise when it went up? So if the price of gas goes up, everything else goes up, correct? Because the trucks are moving goods and services from state to state, you know, country to country, stuff coming from overseas, and the consumer eats that. The people that sell products don't. They just bump the prices up. The price of milk will go up because the truck has to pay more for the gas. The price of bread is going to go up because the bread truck has to pay more for gas. And the consumer eats that. And your employer is not giving you a raise according to inflation. Matter of fact, most of us get raises that are way lower than what inflation is yearly. Like we talked about, inflation was 3.22%.
your job might give you a 1%, 1.5% raise, right? So at that rate, you never actually keep up. And if medical goes up also every year, it eats up the 1, 1.5% one your job already gave. So you're in the same position that you was at the year before. Now another thing, if you have $100 in January 2016, and you had the same $100 in January 2017, it's not the same $100. Because of inflation, you just lost $3.22 in buying power. Right? Because of inflation. So that $100 now spends like $97. Second challenge is taxes. Like we talked about, taxes is taken right around about 30% of your income, which is a third, correct? Mm -hmm. So we have 12 months in a year, a third of that is four months. So if taxes is going to take a third of your income, you're working for free from January to April, right? 30%. If 30% of your income is going to taxes from January to April, you're working for free. You're working for the government, essentially. So the IRS has every single one of us turned upside down and they're shaking change out of your pockets. They want every dime they can get out of you. And that's the fee you pay for being an American, I guess. It's your, month, it's your yearly dues. But they're not optional. They're taking it before you even get it. The third is debt. Because of inflation, because of taxes, if we have to go to the banks and borrow money to compensate for the lack of income that we're receiving. So we'll go out and get credit to purchase a car, purchase a home, purchase furniture. Now people even use a credit to purchase cell phones, clothing, Victoria's Secret, whatever, whatever you may want to purchase. Old Navy, you go to Old Navy today, before you check out, they're going to offer you 10% off of your purchase if you sign up for this credit card. Am I right? And depending on what your credit score is, Debt could bury you even worse because if you purchase a home or purchase a car with subpar credit, your interest rate is going to be a lot higher than someone that would that has an 800 credit score, which puts you even deeper than the one third that we're talking about. A, a fourth, a fifth, or a sixth of your income could be going to debt because you have a subpar credit score. Last but not least, it's big business. It's going to take the last third of your income. Now, big business is very smart. Big business has set up a strategy to get your money out of your pockets once a month, every year. Let's talk about it. January, New Year's, February, Valentine's Day, March, St. Patrick's Day, April. Come on, y'all have me. April. Easter. Easter, May. Mother's Day, June. July. August. Back to school. September. Labor Day. October. Halloween, November, the big spender, December, Christmas. Have we even talked about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, whatever <laughs> fake holiday big business creates to get your money out of your pocket every month? And none of us budget for any of these holidays, correct? Who has a St. Patrick's Day budget? <laughs> Who, has <it? laughs> I'm Irish. Who has an Independence Day budget? Did anybody put some money to the side for that cookout you threw that cost you $300? No? Don't forget the Columbus Day deal. Yeah, Columbus Day, they got a deal in every store for every holiday that you can think of to try to force you to go out to the stores and spend your money. Of course, you realize they use the word steal. You know? Right. <laughs> so once you understand these four challenges, you can respect your money a whole lot better and you just move a little bit differently. So, here at the Financial Fit Club, we want everyone to have personal financial success. Personal financial success is having enough cash flow to support your current lifestyle and to support you in your retirement years. So at the Financial Fit Club, to attain financial success, most people need more cash flow to maintain their current lifestyle because as we know, a lot of people live in paycheck to paycheck or even below that. They're spending 110% of their income per month. They're living beyond their means. So most people need more cash flow to maintain their current lifestyle and more cash flow to build that passive income that you're going to need in retirement so you can enjoy your golden years. Now here at the Financial Fit Club, we use five basic strategies to empower people to achieve that financial success that we're talking about.
go? I don't want to leave anybody. All right. <clears throat> Those five well bidding strategies. Number one, correct tax withholding. <coughs> Number two, maximize credit scores. Number three, debt elimination. Number four, create passive income. And number five, business income. detail about each one of these strategies and kind of explain how we would implement them to enhance our own personal finances. So, number one, correct tax withholding. 80% of employees have too much money withheld out of their paychecks in taxes. Reason being, tax refund season is a major thing in America. They have commercials running for it, everybody's talking about it probably now already about what they plan to do with that money when tax income season actually comes. And the majority of us are taking that tax refund to pay off debts that we've accumulated throughout the year because we didn't have enough money to make it month to month. You swiped your credit card when your car broke down, you got a personal loan for Christmas, so then when you get that tax refund, you're paying off those credit cards and loans that you accumulated throughout the year. But letting the government hold your money, you're losing your return on your investment because the government doesn't pay interest on that money that they're holding for you. It makes more sense to maximize your take home pay and utilize that money to eliminate debt and build wealth. So this is a publication that the IRS put out back in 2005 that gives a little bit of explanation about tax refunds. So in that year 2005, they paid out $215 million in tax refunds. Billion would it be? Would anybody allow a country, a country to borrow $215 billion and not pay interest on it? Why are we? More than 100 million people received tax refunds, which was 80%. 101 million people got a tax refund. And this was 2005, which was 12 years ago. So these numbers probably have doubled since then. The average refund was a little over $2,000, which we can assume now is probably around $3,500 to $4,000. So the average refund, for the average person, they're usually getting about $40 with help from their paycheck too much, too much, too much, which was back in 2005, so let's say $80. So if you have $80 that you're letting the government hold per week, we multiply that per four weeks, we're talking about $320. The average person could be getting an additional $321 in take home pay right now. And they put it right here putting money in any type of savings accounts or paying down debts may be a better option. This is the IRS. May be a better option because you're giving the government an interest free loan. And some people utilize it as like a forced savings, you know, they can't wait to get it because they feel like they saved this money. But we already talked about inflation, right? That money in January isn't going to spend the same next February and March than it would have spent in January. So you're not earning any interest, and you're losing buying power because of inflation. And you're taking on debts because you can't make it month to month. So you're losing all the way around by allowing the government to hold that money. Any questions before I keep going? Sir? And that's right from the IRS. Yeah. Wow. Their publication. So what do you suggest? We can get that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds bad, man. Number two, maximize credit scores. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to correct inaccuracies 
do credit repair and restoration. Now, from my personal situation, um, growing up, um, we had some financial struggles growing up because the average person does not have the financial education and literacy that I actually have now to do the things that they need to do financially. So my parents ended up filing bankruptcy. Me and my father shared the same name, same address, so somehow bankruptcy got on my credit report at nine. I was unaware. At 18, I wanted to get my first apartment and was denied. Like I said, I worked at the shipyard, so I made a good, good enough income to get the apartment. I could definitely afford the rent, but I was denied the apartment because my credit score was shot and I had a bankruptcy. Because, and that was an inaccuracy. So the fact that something was on my credit report that wasn't even mine prevented me from having a place to live. I had to move in with a friend, pay his mom, because of my credit report. It had nothing to do with how much money I was making. Next thing, you want to know what's helping you and hurting your score. Most people don't know what actions they're doing on a day to day that's helping them and hurting them. So that's something you definitely need to figure out. Credit mix. Do you have the right credit mix? Do you have all revolving credit, all installment credit, or do you have the right mixture of the two to maximize your credit score? Length of credit history. <coughs> you have some people out here that be like, oh, I don't have any credit cards, I've never had a credit card, I've never had a car loan, and things like that. Well, you don't have any credit history if you never had a credit card, or never had a car loan, or a home loan. So that hurts your score. Because credit, lift of credit history is a, a big bargaining factor when it comes to how high your score can get. New credit. Like we talked about, every time you go to Old Navy and Victoria's Secret and Walmart, you don't want to take it every time they offer you a credit card to get a discount. Because then you're continuing getting new credit, putting new hits on your credit report that's going to bog down your score. <coughs> Amount of debt. All of us know that if you get a credit card, you shouldn't max it out, right? Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all look like y'all ain't mean that. <laughs> we should only be utilizing 30% of revolving credit. Once you go beyond that 30% plateau, you're going to bring down your score. Because it shows that you cannot handle the credit limit. That's a lot. But if you don't know that, some people will max out the card. They don't know. They feel like they gave it to them. Spend it. Right? Payment history. Payment history is the biggest factor in your credit score. It makes up 35%. If you miss one payment on a credit card, it will crush your score. Based on how high it is. The higher your credit score is, the bigger hit you're going to take. Yes, ma'am. Also, if you have a health insurance, it's, I mean a hospital bill, mm -hmm. and you make a payment arrangement, and you don't keep that payment arrangement, you miss one payment, they put that on your credit mm -hmm. as well, and that kicks down your score. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Debt elimination. So this is an example of a family I sat with. We're going to use the name Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, we went through, corrected their tax withholding, and we found out that they were missing out on an additional $600 a month that they could have been utilizing every month. Also, we put together some strategies like we talked about on the previous slide, maximize their credit score, refinance the things that they had out of credit, which brought an additional $400 back into the home. So after implementing some of the strategies we did do here at the Financial Fit Club, they had an additional $1,000 coming back into their household every month. So this is the debt that they had, which is most common for everyone, a car, credit card, and a home. Nothing, nothing jazzy, right? So this is an example. We want to show how powerful this debt elimination plan was for their family. We took that thousand dollars and put it on top of their car loan instead of paying five forty-five. Now we pay fifteen forty-five. So instead of paying that for thirty-two months, that car note is going at twelve. We took that same amount, put it on top of the credit card. Instead of paying two hundred a month, we pay seventeen forty-nine. Credit card is going five months instead of seventy-eight months. We take that same money, put it on top of the home loan. Instead of paying $1,200, we pay $2,945. Instead of paying on it for 320 months, it's now gone at 68 months. Total debt eliminated was $225,000 in 85 months. That's right around seven years. Cash flow saved, $352,000 that they would have paid in interest if they kept going the route that they were going currently. 
So now they have two, $2,945 to increase their lifestyle or invest. I think with $3,000 a month, everybody can get a bigger home and a nicer car. Would you agree? And you probably could invest and set yourself up for financial freedom. Would y'all agree? So let's look at an example. If they were to invest that money, how long it would take for them to become financially free? So with that $29.45 per month, that's 30, a little over $35,000 a year that they have extra to invest. In 10 years, if we invested that and received 8% interest, they have over a half a million dollars. In 15 years, they've just become millionaires. Just become millionaires just with the three steps in the process. Correct the tax withholding, eliminate debt, and then invest. Create passive income. So we're not talking about people that had astronomical bills like they were making five, six hundred thousand dollars a year. We're talking about basic stuff, a basic car, basic credit card basic home loan. A thousand dollars came back in the home, all they did was pay all that stuff off. They didn't get a raise, they just paid off the debts they had, took that money, plus a thousand dollars that they were losing monthly, and invested. And in 15 years, they're millionaires. If you add in the time that it took to pay off the debts, it took seven years. So we're talking about a 20-year plan where you can become a millionaire. Now I'm telling all of y'all, all of y'all have the potential to be a millionaire. Everybody just say it. I can become a millionaire. Felt good, didn't it? Yeah. Say it one more time. <laughs> so, if you have an additional $35,000 a year because you've eliminated all your debt, don't you think you can start a business? Each and every one of y'all has said out of your mouth one time of a business you would like to start. All of us said, man, I like to open a barbershop. I like to have a car wash. I like to have my own nails. But if you maximize your take on pay and eliminated all your debt, you would have the income to do it. We're talking about $3,000 a month. I think that's enough to sustain your business long enough until you turn a profit. Would y'all agree? Yeah. So I want y'all to say, I can be a business owner. I can be a business owner. Let's say it one more time. Now, if you became a business owner, this is the tough, some of the advantages you would have. Car and truck are now tax deductible because if you're driving your vehicle for business you can write off gas car repairs and if you purchase the car after your business your business can purchase your car for you so that purchase price now is tax deductible communication your cell phone bill your home phone your home internet is now tax deductible because you're using it for your business travel when you take that trip to Cancun with your family hand out a business card at the airport now it's a business expense, tax deductible. Bills and entertainment, when you take your family out to eat, make sure you tell your, the waiter something about your business. Now this is tax deductible. Matter of fact, me and my wife go out all the time. We talk about our business when we're out to eat. We're on a date. That's tax deductible. Wages, a lot of people don't know that you can actually pay your children wages. We stop paying our children allowances and pay them wages. You can pay your child a little over $6,000 a year that'll be tax deductible. Me, as lucky I am, I have four children. So I pay all four of my children $6,000 a year, that's $24,000 that I now can use to reduce my taxable income, which gives me a bigger tax refund at the end of the year. So how do you justify wages? I mean, how do you justify it? You have, to, you have to say what you gave it for. I, did y'all see all these papers right here? Oh. Somebody had to print them. <laughs> <laughs> My kids out there holding the door right now. <laughs> they working, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got to pay them for that. And I'm the one that determines how much they get paid for, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of buying my kids school clothes, pay them wages, and then utilize that money to buy school clothes. Utilize that money to buy Christmas, mm -hmm. right? Utilize that money to pay for them to play football and do soccer and do dance, right? So I gave y'all some outstanding information. Would y'all agree? Yes. yes. So now what? What are you doing? What are y'all doing? I have some more kids. <laughs> yes, the pretty girl with the bun. I was going to save my money. Save your money. That's good, man. Save your money. <laughs> 
Yes, ma'am. You can um, you know, the senators, right? Mm -hmm. oh. um, communications, uh, my cell phone deal is completely taxed up. You can write the whole thing off. Something like your home, you can write off the percentage based on a home office that you can utilize your bedroom for. Write off that percentage of your home. Bills and entertainment, 50% of that. Every time you go out to eat, you get half of that back. And uh, if y'all have more questions, we can go into greater detail about that in a later conversation. So already, already, <coughs> has, a already has that set? Yes. Oh, okay. uh, like miles, I think business miles this year is 55 cents, am I right? 57? Not sure. Not sure? Not like you. We'll say 50 cents. Discount travel and corporate perks. We have a deal with Priceline where you can get discounts through the Priceline web portal that will come with your membership. Priceline already gives discounts on travel. We give a discount on top set this time. So if you decide to take a trip with your family, whether it's airfare, hotels, car rentals, cruises, or whatever, you can receive discounts just because you have a membership with Financial Fit Club. Cashback Mall. Cashback Mall is one of my favorites because it's the thing that you can use to save money on everything that you're already purchasing. When you go to Walmart, you buy stuff from Walmart, you buy stuff from Macy's, you may buy your kids or yourself some shoes from Jimmy Jazz or um, wherever, this cashback mall is loaded with every store you already go to, so you can go through your cashback mall portal and receive a percentage of that money back that you are already going to spend. Cash flow manager software. The cash flow manager software is an income and expense budgeting tool, so you can crunch down your numbers and find out where you're losing money. Do you know where every dime you spend per month is going? Do you have a software to capture it? This software, you can enter in your income, enter in your expenses when you get gas, purchase food, things like that, and look at it broken down piece by piece exactly where every, every dime of your money is going. And they also have a mobile app. So you can put these expenses is why you want to go. You read Walmart right then, you can put it in when you left Walmart. When you leave the gas station, you can put it in at the gas station. Also, tax advice and preparation. Like we said, we talked about taxes, we want to minimize taxes. All of us need tax professionals that we can connect with whenever we need to to ask questions. With this membership, you'll have people that you can call whenever you would like and ask any type of tax question that you may have to make sure that you're maximizing all your tax deductions that's allotted to you. Entrepreneur Pack. This membership also doubles as an entrepreneur pack because everyone starting a business need these major components to get off the ground. You may need a business lawyer to talk to, right? You have access to that. When you want to start a corporation, you may need a business lawyer to talk to about that. You have access to that. When you're thinking about tax deductions that you can utilize for your business, you need a professional to talk to about that. When you're capturing your business expenses, the cash flow manager software does that. It actually has a GPS navigation component built right into it. So when you're traveling on business miles, all you do is turn it on and it tracks all your business miles while you're moving. Also, you can take pictures of receipts and load them right up into the system. When it's time to file taxes for the year, you can print out your profit and loss statement, hand it right to your CPA, so doing your, your taxes as a snap. Versus a lot of people mount up a whole bunch of receipts over the year, and then it's a headache at the beginning of the year trying to figure out what their business expenses are. This software takes care of that for you. Plus, with this membership, you get the financial physical absolutely free. Like we said, we usually sell that for $198. We invest that $30 a day to get that membership. We're going to give you that financial physical absolutely free so we can make sure we lay out all your financial goals and we make them achievable. Also, with your membership, you get two free phone consultations a month with the Financial Fit Club, which is a great component when you're out making major purchases for homes and cars. Because like we said, people that sell cars are car salesmen, right? They're trying to sell you something. How can we know if they're giving you the best terms on your bid? Well, you have someone that you can call and have them look over your paperwork to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck before you make a decision. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm down here uh, with the Financial Fit Club. It's Saturday, October 7th, and uh, I just sat in on Greg's first half, talking about the 30 for 30 challenge, something I'm about to sign up for right this very moment. And uh, the reason why I'm here is because I've known Greg for quite some time now, I want to say at least 10 years, and to see where he's go uh, where he started and to see where he is now with his finances and how serious he is about setting up his family for long-term success, you can't help but respect it. Plus, you know, he's just a great guy, so come down here, let Greg help you out, and uh, become financially fit. Your legacy depends on it.